Week 11 up to week 13, lesson number 4, covers the topic about what is a message. So, we are all familiar when it comes to defining what a message is. So, how do you define the word message? So, at the end of this module, you are expected to identify situations that uses persuasion and argumentation and persuade and argue information. So for our lesson, we will discuss about the communication for various purposes, which includes argumentation and persuasion. When we argue, we persuade someone to believe or agree with our opinion or point of view. This is why we tried so much to debate, negate, and persuade. It has always been the purpose of an argument. We can never say yes all the time, especially when we know that something in the sentence is not right or it quite differ from the idea we tend to believe in. So we always remember that all of us have different opinions or insights when it comes to a particular topic. So the most important part of an argument is we need to provide a solid and valid evidence so that we could encourage the other people to believe with our side. So this valid evidence should come from book, magazines, journals, articles, or any other printed materials. We face numerous challenges every day, and one of those is when we have to persuade some to change their minds. Situations where we want to persuade include reveal, do, desist, learn, and believe. So in the next slides, we will define these situations. So let's define the word reveal. So this is the situation arises when you know someone knows something, but they cannot tell you about it. Perhaps information is very confidential, so your power of persuasion will be put to test. In conversation, information is revealed a bit at a time and in a turn-taking format. So what are the situations in reveal? So for example, in a job interview, so usually an interviewer asks interview questions to the interviewee. For example, tell me about yourself, um, what is your strength, what is your weakness, or why should we hire you, what are your best qualifications. So that is one example. Another one is a police interrogation. So in this situation, uh, this is where the police tries to, um, tries to interrogate you in a case or in a situation. So he or she will ask you such questions to support your um, evidences. And another situation is getting to know someone. Of course, if you are trying to court a girl or or a person that is uh, that catches your in interest, of course, uh, this intends you to ask questions to know her about more. The next one is the word do. The power of persuasion will be test if you convince someone to do something for you. This is very beneficial to someone who can do this kind of situation, but time is always the hindrance. So what are the example situations here? The first one is parenting. Second one is managing, third is sales, and next one is propaganda. The next one is the word desist. This includes the act of telling someone to stop his or her doing. This is the act of making them stop. Although this may seem difficult since habit is nearly impossible to change, so your ability to persuade will vary. So example for this is in situations such as parenting or in a government policy such as smoking or any other policies. So for example, um, if you have known someone that is smoking for several years, it is hard for us to stop them because they used to do it. So the act of persuading him to stop smoking will be challenging for you. The next one is the word learn. So the goal is to impart knowledge and making someone to understand something about your idea. So for example, in teaching, 
for example, the way I share my knowledge about this lesson is an example of this situation. Another one is coaching and the third one is parenting. So next one is the word believe. So this is changing someone's belief such as in religious conversation. Beliefs are at the base of much of what we assume is true. This makes persuading at this level both powerful and difficult. Yet when you master working at third level, you may be better at all-round persuading. So such situation examples here are like leadership or religious or cold conversation. So how to persuade people to agree? So there are such factors that we need to learn why people agree with such certain situations or with type of people. So the first one is liking. It is easy to persuade people if they like you. Second one is the social proof. This implies that people are moving in the direction you want. The next one is consistency. Always keep your word consistent and firm. The next one is authority. People are strongly influenced by experts. Number five is scarcity. People want what they cannot have. So the last one is reciprocity. So this gives something to gain something. Another lesson is all about communication, aids, and strategies using tools of technology. So for today's objective, we are expected to obtain, provide, and disseminate information. One way to obtain information is to ask questions such as why, what, who, when, where, and how. This is the common and simpler way to get information or ideas. But what is the use of communicative strategies to obtain information? When we employ strategy in communication, it creates an easy way for better understanding because it details the message, audience, and resource of communication. So how do we define the word communicative strategies? So these are the plans ways or means of sharing information which are adopted to achieve in a particular social, political, psychological, and linguistic purpose. So these are the types of communicative strategies. So what are they? So on the next slide, we will define what a nomination, restriction, turn-taking, topic control, topic shifting, repair, and termination are all about. So let's define first what a nomination is. So this presents a particular topic clearly, truthfully, and saying only what is relevant or important. A speaker carries out a nomination to collaboratively and productively establish a topic. When you apply this strategy, you try to open a topic to the people you are communicating with. So the best examples here are when you ask questions such as, have you felt the earthquake last night? Or you, when you want to um, share your uh, what you know to your friend, for example, there's a new film for festival next month. Or another one is, Mom, I'm pregnant. Another one is restriction. This is all about constraining the response or reaction within a set of categories. This refers to any limitation you have as a speaker. For example, is report using the English language, or this is when the teachers ask you for a brainstorm on peer pressure. So this encourages you to share ideas on what you know on a particular topic. Another one is the turn taking. So this recognizes when and how to speak because it is one's turn. This pertains also to the process by which people decide who takes the conversational floor. So the next one is the prim primary idea is to give all communicators a chance to speak or share their ideas. For example, when you want to encourage someone to share their idea, you can tell them like, you have the spotlight now, or we are ready whenever you are. Do you have something to say? 
or if a teacher asks you, for example, do you have questions or concerns at the end of the class, this is an example of turn taking. Another one is the topic control, which covers how procedural formality and informality affects the development of topics in conversation. This means that when a topic is initiated, it should be collectively developed by avoiding unnecessary interruptions and topic shifts. Keeping this conversation going by asking questions and eliciting responses. For example, you said that you like milk chocolates, but you also stated that dark chocolates taste good. So, do you know that all chocolates are based from a single ingredient called cacao? So, this is an example of topic control. Another one is the topic shifting where it involves moving from one topic to another. This is where a part of a conversation ends and also begins. Another one is introducing a new topic followed by the continuation of the topic beforehand. Example for this is, I found a treasure chest and it's heavy. Wow, that's amazing. Where did you find it? So, at, for example, like in at the backyard of an abandoned house. Do you know what that it's hunted? It is said that a family has been killed at the same spot during the 1900s. Another one is repair, in which um, it refers on how speakers address these problems in speaking, listening, and comprehending that they may encounter in a conversation. This is where you overcome communication breakdown to send more comprehensible messages. For example, is that, I beg your pardon, but the latest record of the number of islands in the Philippines is 7,641 and not 7,107 anymore. So the correct pronunciation of Nike is not Nike, but Nike. Another one is termination, where it refers to the conversation participants, close initiating remarks that end a topic in a communication process. So it utilizes a verbal and non-verbal signals to end the interaction. For example, is that, see you around then. Let's chat some more when I see you again. I just need to rush this. Would that be okay? Goodbye and thank you, Mr. Moloboko. So that is the end of our lesson for today. So if you have questions, clarifications, suggestions regards to our lesson, feel free to leave your message on the chat box.